Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. The first thing I want to get to is this mass UFO sighting that is happening tonight. Well, just a little bit earlier, a couple hours ago, over Rockland, California. And people all over have been seeing this long string of lights moving through the sky. It was even featured on the local news which I will show you a screenshot of in just a second, but I'm showing you all of these images that were posted to various uh, Facebook users' pages who were seeing these lights, and it looked like there's probably thousands of them. And they didn't look like Chinese lanterns or anything like that. Usually when you see those, you'll get maybe a few, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, but not thousands like you're seeing here. And so here we'll go to another image of these. So I got an email and he says, and I quote, saw this on the news tonight in Rockland, California. Well, over Rockland and Roseville area of these strange lights in the sky with many witnesses. It even made it on to the local KCRA Channel 3 News. People have been posting pictures on their Facebook uh, about these strange lights, which uh, appeared to move slowly across the sky and then began to curve as if they were all flying in formation. So you've seen these three images that he sent in. I don't see any uh, other news stories about this yet because it is so new and fresh, um, but here is a still from the KCRA Channel 3 News showing these lights uh, making this very strange uniform curve. Right, you might have seen a strange light in the sky. Dirk is here to explain what that might have been. Might have been, <laughs> yeah. We have several folks that called in and said, hey, there were some lights in the sky, and, and one even sent in a picture here. Uh, Kay Finnegan sent this shot in, and you can see just kind of that arc of lights. It almost looks like just a cluster of uh, stars that are up there, but let's zoom in just a little bit so you oh. can see that <laughs> right there. And uh, this happened at about 7.56 in the evening, and this is a picture taken from the Rockland Roseville area. And my guess is that it could be just like uh, just some space debris or something that's up there, but it just it took a while to go and across the sky. Arc. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I just I that's, know. That's, Pick that's, us like a space up. Shuttle. I don't know. <laughs> no one's in there saying, take me to your leader. <laughs> no. Never know. He's right here. <laughs> So this happened at 7.56 p.m. last night on the 25th. And um, so far, I'm unable to find this actual video on the news website. I believe they just haven't got it up yet because it just happened. It'll likely be up there tomorrow. Uh, but you can clearly see these lights, which started out in a perfect straight line, all sort of uniformly curving like this. And that is what is very strange. Because usually if it's something like balloons or lanterns or something like that, they'll go every which way. They will rarely curve like this all at the same time, as if it's all just one large entity. And so, I definitely wanted to post this and see if there were any other videos or photos out there or just any new info about what these lights are. Um, it seems to be spooking out a lot of people. I mean, it even made it onto the news, so it must be something big, and um, it's very, very strange. So anybody over Rockland or Roseville, California, definitely shoot me a message, all right? Um, so now I want to show you another sighting that happened over Phoenix. Very cool footage, but I have to warn you, there's some heavy language within. So if you've got children around, uh, I'm just letting you know. Uh, so check this out, and we'll talk in just a second. And now there's shit fucking trailing across. What the Stay fuck? Stay on your camera. What the fuck? This is gonna be on fucking CNN, dude. Disappeared, popped up. Those are aliens. No, it's something. What the fuck? That shit's moving. Oh my fucking god. Holy shit, wow. dude. What the fuck is this? Right there. Oh my fucking god! That is serious stuff right this there. is fucking insane! They're flying the fuck around all over the place! What the fuck is that shit? Holy fucking Christ! That is stuff right oh my fucking god, that's insane! That's stuff. I'm losing my fucking mind right now! Oh my fuck! <laughs> All right, so this pretty amazing footage was captured over Phoenix, Arizona a couple days ago of a, a definite formation of lights sitting in the sky, and they're doing some very 
controlled maneuvers here, I'll say. They, they don't look like just some floating lights. Um, they start off in a triangular formation, and if you'll notice, some of these lights will uh, vanish and then reappear, but they'll do it all at the same time, sequential, as if they're in sequence with each other, which also makes it very strange and gives you kind of an idea that there may be some control here, some intelligent control. And obviously, the source of it is freaking out, shaking the camera, losing focus with the objects, but I gotta say, it is a pretty good shot here. We have the skyline, we have the buildings, so I think we're getting a very good view. Some different zooming angles, and um, yeah, just what is going on over Phoenix reminds me of the Phoenix Lights incident from 1997. Uh, we've had a lot of things happen over Phoenix, and I guess when you're in the desert, where all of the strange testing happens, and you have all of these secret bases spread across the desert around the Phoenix, New Mexico, California areas, you're gonna see some strange stuff. Uh, but this was um, obviously over a well-populated area, and um, definitely want to hear what you guys think. Any of you guys over Phoenix, I know a lot of you are, uh, shoot me a message, let me know what you think. Uh, very, very strange stuff. Definitely look like lights making a formation, and at one point you see them, they, they all move into a perfect straight line. Perfectly spaced apart, perfect razor straight line. And, you know, th that's something very different from flares or something that's falling to the ground. These things are doing formations. So, big thanks to the source who sent that over. These sightings are ramping up. It's happening all over the world. High strangeness. I mean, it's just, things are ramping up. Alright, so now we have a really intriguing video uh, that was sent to me by another user who posted this. He made this video, posted it on his YouTube channel of a very strange occurrence near a volcano in Japan. So check this out. Alright, so this video is actually from 2011, so it's not new, it's from 2011, but I had strangely never seen it or heard about it, which is very strange because there's really nothing out there that I haven't seen as it pertains to UFO footage and stuff like that, so I knew that if I hadn't seen it, many of you probably hadn't either. And so what I found is that, first of all, there's not a lot of coverage or news stories about this. None, really. None that I could find about this strange blue light that we see appear near this Japanese volcano. Uh, the volcano in question is in Kagoshima, Japan, and it's called the Sakurajima Volcano. And we see the volcano in the background, and then all of a sudden, we see this bluish-white what almost looks like a plasma discharge or what the source called a portal 
and what it's really known as by the few people that have seen it, it's known as the Sakurajima portal. And we see this light grow and grow and grow until, I mean, it's got to be covering a pretty big area of land here. You know, at first it kind of reminded me of a transformer exploding on a power line or something like that. But this thing lasts for a very long time before it finally vanishes and we really don't see anything. It's as if it was never there to begin with. So the viewer who posted this, and by the way, you guys can check out his YouTube video and watch the full version where he breaks it down. Uh, so what we know is that this video, only a very small clip of it was posted back in 2011. So the source was able to track the video, get a hold of the full clip, and then um, we see this light. So what could this be? Is this a portal of some kind? If you'll notice during the video, we also have some other anomalous activity happening. We see sort of a, a white object uh, moving back and forth before the light appears. And then to the right of this giant blue light, we see these sort of four or five lights sort of lighting up one by one, moving back and forth. Sort of like you would see with an LED strobe light turning on one by one and then going back and forth. So that's also very strange. There's a lot of strange things happening here. And uh, just as fast as the, the light appeared, it grows, it grows, it grows, and then it just vanishes. Is this a portal opening of some sort? We've seen so many UFO sightings happening around these volcanoes, uh, things watching, things flying down into the mouths of these volcanoes. It's almost as if someone is intervening and keeping these things from blowing or, or something. But we do know they're being watched, um, and we've shown that if you've uh, followed our channel. So, uh, again, big thanks to the source, and I will put the link to the YouTube video where you can um, learn some more info about it, and uh, be sure to check that out on your way out. Now, here is a strange new sighting uh, of a white glowing energy orb that was captured over Vancouver, Canada. So check this out. All right, so this was sent in by a viewer uh, who was uh, going to a college over in Vancouver. He stepped out on the balcony to have a cigarette, and he witnessed this strange glowing orb hovering above the tree line in this park here. Uh, it was a very, very foggy day, cloudy, rainy, and the source stated that he came out for a smoke, and he saw this object glowing through the fog with a very intense bright light um, especially for the daytime very very bright cutting through this fog and having stepped out onto this balcony many times during the day the smoke he is perfectly aware of all of the street lights and everything like that so he's adamant that this is no street light or building light or anything like that uh, he said it did not look like a drone, there were no blinking lights on it, and the object really doesn't move. It just sort of hovers above these trees before it dispersed, about seven minutes later, after it appeared. And, um, yeah, the source said that it, it sort of reminded him of a very condensed but powerful orb of energy. 
And again, very, very intense, bright shine coming from this thing, cutting through the fog. So we could only imagine how bright it would be at night. So that's another thing that was very strange. Um, happened just a couple of days ago over um, Vancouver. So anyone in Vancouver, Canada, hit me up if you've uh, seen this or have any more info. And big thanks to uh, SV for sending this over. Now, uh, I want to get on to some, some interesting things that are happening with the planet Mars. And no, I'm not talking about some images of rocks that look like something else. I know you guys hate that. Uh, but nonetheless, some interesting information. But first, I want to show you one other anomalous finding that was emailed to me by a viewer captured on Google Earth or Google Maps of what looks like a flying saucer sitting at the end of a runway at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. So here we are, we're on Google Maps, and to find this, all you have to do is type in JPL, and then go to Google Maps, and you want to look just behind the uh, JPL laboratory, and you'll see a small building with a runway coming out of it. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And if you don't know, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory is a federally funded research and development center where they test and create a lot of secret stuff. Uh, now, some of it's public. I mean, all of these facilities have a public angle, and they say that they're transparent, but a lot of secret stuff happens at this place, trust me. They have secret uh, tunnels leading into the mountains back here, which I'll also show you. Uh, but as we come to this runway here, you may already see it. What do we have here? Perfect saucer shape. It has a shadow to it, so we definitely know it's lifted, it's elevated up off the ground. This isn't just something painted on the ground or anything like that. We see what looks like on the rim of the saucer, these sort of black, perfectly spaced out spots. Which, I don't know if you guys remember, and we've talked about this in past videos, there was a sighting uh, in Africa that happened in 1994 where over 60 school children witnessed a UFO land in a schoolyard, and they described a saucer with lights that wrapped around the edge of the craft. John Lennon, well-known Beatles member, also witnessed a saucer like this in New York City, which again had lights wrapping around the edge. So we have this uh, saucer shape here. We have a, an inner circle, like we've seen on the, the uh, typical saucer-shaped objects. And, um, yeah, it's sitting at the end of what looks like a runway here at none other than the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Let's go ahead and switch to the uh, 3D view here, which is really cool. If you're on Google Maps, they've um, implemented this three-dimensional surface mapping here, so you can really get an idea of uh, the hilly terrain and um, it really gives you this cool three-dimensional look at everything. And so let's go ahead and zoom back in. Although it really doesn't give us any more definition, it does sort of give us a more domed shape to this saucer-like object. So it really does look like a saucer, and it's in the shape of a saucer. So could this be some sort of secret technology that they're testing out there? And while we're here, I'll just show you some of these entrances to the uh, underground areas. And you can see these entrances here. Here we have two that are built into the side of this mountain here. And then we have a third entrance here going up underground. So, you know, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory is just like any other secret base. Uh, they do testing. They have facilities underground. And, you know, when you have underground facilities, it really doesn't matter where they are. Nobody is going to be seeing anything. Uh, but they definitely test a lot of their stuff outdoors. And, uh, yeah, check out this strange saucer yourself. And uh, great find. So, um, lastly, I want to talk about the upcoming Mars missions that are in the works after the U.S. Senate passed a uh, bipartisan bill giving NASA $19.5 billion to continue working on a new mission to Mars. And so it's official. We are definitely going to Mars. It's a, a critical mission because we want to get humans there for the first time. And that's what all the talk's been about. There's been a lot of interest in going to Mars, and we've talked about this before. There's a lot of strange things happening on Mars, and I honestly think that they have found something there. I mean, we have found a lot of stuff, 
And so you can only imagine what NASA has truly found, what they really aren't showing us, and what their rovers have found. Because I firmly believe that Mars was like Earth at one point, it was inhabited, NASA knows this, and it very well could be still, and we've seen evidence that would corroborate this. So they want to get humans there. They want to get men there who can really look around and, and, and do like what we did in the moon landings. You can't just do it with a robotic rover. You need people there. And so there's also going to be an 80-day mock Mars mission that started uh, this past Saturday in Utah. Here you're seeing the Mars Desert Research Station located in the Utah desert where uh, seven participants are going to embark on an 80-day simulated mission to Mars. And so we're ramping up. And back to my thoughts about Mars being inhabited, there's something else very strange that I wanted to talk about. I'm not sure if I've spoken about it before, but many people, including myself, have become aware of the radical color changes that the Martian surface has gone through over the years. And the ongoing cover-up by NASA to try to hide the true color of Mars, and moreover, the Martian skies. So this is a typical image of what NASA would have us believe is the true color of Mars. Uh, red desert, thick red hazy sky. However, we know for a fact that Mars looks very much closer to Earth, and we have seen NASA slip up many times in the past and even publish photographs from Mars showing it in its true color before they took them down, enhanced them, and then gave us the same photographs sent through a red filter. So this here is actually what Mars looks like. It has a beautiful blue sky. It, it looks more like the Arizona desert than it does in these images being put out by NASA. But uh, I just want you guys to check out this photograph here. Now, this is what Mars looks like. Do you notice how it's not all dark orange and red? No, it's more tan and blue. And this image was taken in 1999 by a very talented amateur astronomer by the name of Antonio Cadado in Portugal. Now, he acquired this with his modest 10-inch telescope, giving us a very detailed image of Mars when it was about 60 million miles away from us. So compare that photo to this one here, showing this dark reddish orange planet that was taken about 50 years before by Dr. Robert Layton of the California Institute of Technology using Mount Wilson's 60 inch telescope. And one thing I want you to notice here is the obvious color difference between the two. And furthermore, Look at the detail from the amateur telescope here on the left compared to the detail of this other shot of Mars taken in the 50s but with a 60 inch telescope versus his little 10 inch telescope, which should give you an indication that there's definitely some doctoring going on here. And furthermore, this picture that was taken in the 50s was when Mars was only about 40 million miles away. Whereas the amateur 1995 photograph, it was 60 miles away, and yet his telescope was smaller and farther away, and he got more detail than what they could get with a 60-inch telescope and with Mars being closer. And so you see the enhancement. You see the color enhancement here. NASA has a very long history of altering and playing around with the true colors of Mars. One of the most infamous accounts of this happening revolves around uh, the release by JPL, who we were just talking about earlier, uh, over a quarter of a century ago, of the first true color Viking lander image. Now, if you don't know, the Viking lander was the very first lander to Mars to send back full color photographs of the Martian surface back in the 70s. And during that time, there was a very peculiar incident so, the Viking touched down in the pre-dawn darkness of July 20th, 1976. The next day, they publicized that the very first true color image of Mars was going to be released. And you're seeing that very image that they released originally here on the screen. Now, the info that we have on this specific incident came decades later by someone who was personally present at JPL when this image was published. 
and that man goes by the name of Dr. Ron Levin, who was the son of the scientist Dr. Gilbert Levin, who was in charge of Viking's three historic biology investigations. So, what I'm going to read you is from Mr. Levin's first-hand recollections of what happened when this photograph was released. So, he said, and I quote, At about 2 p.m., the first color image from the surface of another planet, Mars, began to emerge on the JPL color video monitors located in many of the surrounding buildings, specifically set up for JPL employees and media personnel to view the Viking images. Gil and Ron Levitt sat in the main control room where dozens of video monitors and anxious technicians waited to see this historic first color picture. As the image developed onto the monitors, the crowd of scientists, technicians, and media reacted enthusiastically to a scene that would be absolutely unforgettable. Mars in color. The image showed an Arizona-like landscape, with a blue sky, brownish-red desert soil, and gray rocks with green splotches. Two hours after the first color image appeared on the monitors, a technician abruptly changed the image from the light blue sky and Arizona-like landscape to a uniform orange-red sky and landscape. And that image you're seeing here. Levin described this incident as, quote, a deliberate, if perplexing, methodical distortion of the incoming Viking lander data. So, here you have it. Here are both images. They're the same image, but we have the original image that was published, and then the second image, after they tore the first one down, ran this red filter through it, and republished it for the media. So the big question comes down to why would they be trying so hard to hide the true Earth-like color of Mars? And the only reason I can come up with is that Mars is still, to this day, very similar to Earth. A blue sky indicates that there's likely nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere like we have here on Earth. And where there are oxygen and nitrogen, there can be life. If Mars is still very much like Earth and has an atmosphere, then there may be something there. And they don't want us to know that. What they do want us to believe is that it's simply a red, dead planet covered in radiation. And so they get these images, run them through a red filter, and the public eats it up. And it's been going on since the very first color image was published from that 1976 Viking lander. So, very, very strange stuff. I will post some links down below that will go way more in-depth about all of the strange things surrounding these color changes over the years, so be sure to check it out. Let me know about everything else we've spoken about today. Hit me up, send me emails if you have any new information about all of these sightings, and be sure to stick around because I've got a lot more coming, and I'll see you back in just a bit. Stay safe, guys. <laughs> Thank you.